parents out here, some of the parents here in the audience say, I've been through this. How many of you have looked in the mirror sometime and said, you know, I'm a perfect parent. What went wrong with my child? Well, that's the topic that we're trying to tackle today. Lots of moms on our show today. We were talking to Tiffany and Tammy, mother-daughter team here. Tiffany's at 15 years old, has gotten involved with some gang members, is really acting out, stealing, getting kicked out of school, wants to have a baby at 15. Tiffany, why? So I got something to call my own. Everybody else. Everybody the man there said, get a dog. What do you, come here. What are you saying here? Stand up. <laughs> if you want something to call your own, why don't you get a doll? I mean, it's, I you're 15 no years old. I mean, it's, it's a lot of hard work. The baby needs love. You can't give him love. You can't even love yourself. It seems you're wearing makeup. I love you're 15. You have a midriff on. It's winter. I don't understand. Mm. I don't. Tiffany, help us understand because that, that's tough for us to, 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 to uh, well, it's tough for us to understand, so help us. I just want to be able to do what I want to do. If anyone don't like what I do, well, then that's them. So if no. I want to have a baby, I'll have a baby. No, wait a minute. Up here, the like, audience is just really, come on, stand up, please. Yes. Tiffany, you are 15 years old. Do you have your own apartment? No. Huh? No. Are you going to shoplift to buy baby food and baby clothes? You live with this is sitting right next to you. She is your own. And you don't need boys to have father figures. You've got role ma male role models in school. Teachers, you've got preachers. There are people out there. You don't need men on the street. Get it together before something happens. I, you know, I, I wonder sometimes, I, I always, you hear me say this on the show a couple of times because it really impacted me. I had a therapist on the show one time who talked about a, a teenager coming to her talking about getting involved in sex very early and she said you know all I wanted was a hug and I ended up pregnant so I wonder if it's the affection we have heard Tiffany talk about wanting to belong we have heard Tiffany talk about is it affection that you need Tiffany yeah is it attention that you need yeah are you getting that from your mother right now somewhat can you well, tell your mother what, you know, one of the greatest lessons we learn in life, and it's going to take you a lot of practice, I promise you, because I'm three decades going on four, and I'm still practicing. But we have to learn how to tell people, to teach people how to love us, and to tell people what we need. So can you look at your mom and tell her just a, a little bit of what you need? What I need is some more freedom to be able to go out and do things. You can't have freedom because you can't be trusted. If you could be trusted, you'd have more freedom. Tammy, why don't you tell her what you need from her? I need a little bit of uh, respect. I need you I to... I give you respect. Don't even say that. Don't respect me. Every time I ground you, you said, no, I'm not. I'm not grounded. I can't take the phone from you. You say, you're not taking the phone from me. I need a little bit of... my school. I need a little bit of respect. If you gave me respect did what I asked you to do, you could have all the freedom if I could trust you when you were out there. If I knew that I wasn't going to have to worry whether the cops are going to call me or whether the morgue is going to call me or who you're hanging out with or whose house you're at. This looks like it's breaking both of your hearts to me. I don't know. I don't, really, I don't give a fuck. Let me, tell, let me tell you why this is of a concern to us, Tiffany. Because if you don't respect your mother, you don't care about all these people right here. And you, and you don't care about the television airwaves and all the homes out there that you just put some spew into. You've got to respect people, honey. Well, my father, he don't, he don't try to contact me. He never tries to get a hold of me. I, I've only seen him once, is that, and he's with some other slut. No, I'm not trying to say my mom's a slut, but he was with, I don't know, he was just with some bitch. She doesn't know anything. I think, I think, I think that, 
Yeah. What I hear you saying is that your father's not being there has a big he, impact on you. He had a good you. job, and when he found out the child support he needed to pay, he, he stopped his job. And what did that do to you do as a kid? What did that do to you when your father was not there for you, not giving you child support, not even calling you? What does that do to a kid? I don't know really, but... Yes, it, you do. It, You've got to know. Tell me what it does, because I want your father to hear it if he's listening. Well, if he is listening, I just want to, I just want a phone call or something from him because, I don't know, I haven't seen him since the Madeira Fair in like two, three years. And what does that do to you when you don't have your daddy? For it's hard to grow up without a dad because you need a father figure. Everyone needs a father figure around. Right. Mm -hmm. Our next mother-daughter team might be able to relate to some of what Tiffany and Tammy are saying even though they come from different worlds. Vicki and her 17-year-old daughter Nicole are going through some tough times too. Their extraordinary story is featured in this month's McCall's magazine. The trouble started, they say, when Nicole turned 12 years old. She was hanging out with gang members, started having sex, started drinking, started smoking pot, Vicky was at a loss for ways to save her daughter's life, and they come here today still trying. The gang stuff. Being affiliated with gang members has cost your family a lot of fear. Right. I understand that you've been threatened by some of these gang members? Just for answering my phone. What's going on here? We had uh, one of her friends, she was always having friends come and go, and one of her friends at the time, they had had... Um, some kind of little argument and so she called on a Saturday from morning until evening constant and I was picking up the phones I said you know don't call here anymore and, and I was being nice at the first 15 calls <laughs> <laughs> but after that I said you know this has got to stop and I said I'm recording these so that we can get you to stop calling us and from then on the brothers who were, were gang members started calling and putting their points across Mm. Um, basically telling me that they could kill me at any time I was nothing to them and just spewing foul language and that was just the start of it. Nicole, how could you put your family in that kind of jeopardy? I was very childish back then. Um, that was in sixth grade. Sixth grade? Sixth grade. Sixth grade. I've grown out of it. I've been through a lot. No, I've got to say, now, now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this. I look at the two of you and I would never dream I'd see you on my show talking about this. <laughs> I'm serious. There's a lot of people that have worse stories than ours, but we have been through a lot. I want you to tell us some more. And you say you've grown up. I want to know what got you to grow up so fast. Um, first started with the gangs and then graffiti, hanging around them, the taggers, um, doing drugs, drinking. I don't know, I, I just like finally grew out of it. I realized that I need to grow up and start going back to school. I'm going to attend school again. You are, because I understand that you didn't go to school for a whole year. And then when was, you did go, you were expelled for selling drugs. You, scr <laughs> you scratched uh, gangs, things in your mom's car. You stole stuff out the house. I want to know how you changed, and I know want to know what you say to Tiffany here. We're going to have some good peer pressure today. <laughs> also coming up, a mom swears that she feeds her children only good, healthy food, as any perfect parent would certainly try to do. But her kids both weigh close to 200 pounds, and both of them are under the age of 13. She blames her children. Is this mother at all responsible? We'll have their story and let you decide right after this.